Hey guys, it's Chris here with Called Wander. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Today I'm going to show you a tour of our flatbed truck camper. We're going to show you the outside part of the truck and what we've done to modify the flatbed. A little disclaimer, we're in a beautiful place, so if you're distracted by the waves and the scenery that you may see, we do want that to be part of the inspiration. We love having our truck camper because it allows us to go to places like Baja, Mexico, where we are right now, currently on the Bay of Conception. We live full time in our truck camper. This is home for us, so we've done everything we can to make it feel like that. And we've done it on a really tight budget. You'll see that the modifications that we've done to the truck and the camper are pretty simple, things that you can do, and we'll show you how to do those in later videos. We'll show you what we've done um, to make it feel like home and hopefully you'll get some ideas and some inspiration for your flatbed truck camper. We have a 2002 F-250 and it's got a long bed, a flat bed, and we have a short bed camper, the Lance 845. It's a 2004 model. And so what that's done for us is it's created a space between our truck and our camper, which is great for us to be able to store the things we want to store outside to be able to carry a little bit more. Our initial goal is to drive from Alaska to Argentina, and so to do so we wanted to have maximum storage space. Uh, we looked at truck campers, and when you place a truck camper on a truck, you lose a lot of storage space with the side of the bed. And so we wanted to use a flatbed because it wouldn't have that, in which case we could build out some special storage areas for us. So we'll go ahead and get into showing you the tour of the truck camper. We chose an F-250 crew cab because we wanted to have as much space as we could inside our truck to use that as a additional storage and moving space. So I'll go ahead and show you how we've built out the back part of our truck to really make a unique setup for us. We built a storage cabinet. We just have regular plastic pullouts. We sh I'll show you both sides of our truck. We have the same setup. So I've got my shoe bin up here, miscellaneous knickknacks, and then we've got additional storage that sits up top. We've got our bike helmets and camera gear up there. And then this is the really cool thing. We keep our stand-up paddleboard right behind me in the driver's seat. Everything fits into this perfectly. It fits right there. As we designed the storage space, we kept in mind that we were gonna carry our stand-up paddleboard and our uh, inflatable kayak. And so it's kind of a symmetrical build. On the passenger side behind Lindsay, we have the same setup. We've got storage space for shoes, miscellaneous items, and then we would keep our inflatable kayak right there. It is not there because we are taking it out, but I can show you the underside of the storage space that we've got for our dog. Everest has a place where she can lie while we're driving we built on top of this special space underneath. We built it so we can lift up and we've got additional storage underneath. So we're storing all of our winter clothes and other items that we don't use that often, extra dog food. And this folds over. This is the space that I mentioned between the truck and the camper that we wanted to have for additional storage, particularly for our generators, but also for things that we use and keep outside. And I'll go into how this breaks down in just a moment. I'll show you also that we've got both sides strategically um, built so that we have things that we need on either side of the truck. We developed a basic locking system to keep everything secure. And so now we have access to things like our kitchen, outdoor kitchen water, our generator, our traction pads, our hose on this side, and I'll show you what we've got on the other side as well. This was the idea for us having the flatbed truck where we had the long bed for the truck and the short bed camper. So we have this additional about 16 inches of space in our instance. If you're building your own flatbed truck camper, you might have more space or less space if you go this route. 
But something really important to talk about, which I can talk about now, is making sure that your center of gravity is not too far back if you do this particular kind of setup. So our center of gravity from the camper specs puts us perfectly over the rear wheel axle, um, which is as far back as we could possibly go. We fit perfectly. Again, make sure to check all the specs. We had to do tons of research to make sure we were matching the right camper with the right truck, make sure everything was lined up perfectly so that we weren't going to cause our truck to pop a wheelie when we were driving, because that's probably the last thing you want. On the, this side of the truck, same setup, same basic security. We have two Honda 2000 generators so that we could hook them in parallel and run our air conditioning if we need to. So far, we haven't needed to, um, but we have that ability. It, it's really good for powering up. We do have 300 watts of solar for our camper but it's good for powering up on a rainy, cloudy day. Up top, we keep oil and other truck-related fluids. So uh, again, things that we aren't gonna store somewhere else, but we definitely need to carry with us. Looking at our outside storage, this is really the reason why we went with the flatbed. Because with a normal truck, you have the walls of the bed that stand up and you can shove things between the camper and the truck, but you're talking about just a couple little things. Here, we were able to build out the entire space to hold more storage for the things that we knew we needed for our long-term trip. It was a pretty simple process. We have our boxes that open out. In this box, we keep our tools, our outdoor grill, and other miscellaneous items. This is a normal toolbox for the back of a truck. We just inverted it 90 degrees so instead of the lid popping up, it pops out like this. And then we put these chains on here. So we've got kind of a table for being able to take things out and set them down and so forth. This is an underbody box. So it's designed to actually be underneath in a place underneath our truck. We set it up here space-wise. We measured out everything on our flatbed and we tried to find boxes that were already made and we measured everything, measured it twice, measured it three times to make sure we had the dimensions right. We originally wanted to build on top of our flatbed and weld to it, but we realized we have a steel flatbed that's already very heavy, and so if we were gonna weld more steel, we'd just be adding more weight to the camper. On the passenger side, our storage is also equally as simple. So behind our special storage area, we've got another box that opens up. And for us, it worked perfect. We've got these food crates that fit in there. And then we've also got storage space out here, which we did do a little custom welding. We didn't add too much weight and too much steel. So this is a door that'll just open and we keep all of our um, extra fuel. We keep oil, our bottle jacks. We also have leveling blocks that we'll keep back here. And so this is, Again, the unique part about having a flatbed is the space that you can develop into storage and custom ideas. One of those custom ideas for us is an outdoor kitchen. The more we traveled, the more we liked the idea of being able to cook outside. And so we made it really simple. Looking at our camper, we've got our propane right here. We actually have two propane tanks, which is great. And so we thought, why don't we run a propane grill directly from the propane tanks. So a friend of ours built out this backsplash for us. And so this is actually attached with 3M tape and 5200 glue so that it stays. We lift it, but then when we're ready to cook, we lift it up and I'll show you what it looks like when we're all ready to, to grill. So this is our very basic but awesome outdoor kitchen setup, our Blackstone griddle with its regulator. We have a hose that we've adapted. It goes right up and comes into our propane tank so we can run the grill directly from there. We also keep outside water so it's just really quick. Rinse our hands, wash dishes, 
just keep things, uh, keep some water outside. So we take a load off of our gray tank when we're out when we're camping out in the wild. And there's also space on either side of the grill to be able to prep for dinner, to have anything that's going about to go on the grill or come off the grill. It works as a table of all sorts for being able to put dirty dishes so we can wash the dishes with our water. And we really love this. This is something we've been evolving over time. We definitely recommend if you're building a flatbed camper and you have the storage space, it's a really simple process to use the lid of the box as a table. And then we've reinforced it with these wire. So it's not going anywhere. We could put a good amount of weight on it. This storage area here is for a second battery. Our camper has space for one battery, which is great for most people. We wanted to have the additional battery space. And we'll talk about our energy in a different video. Um, but we do have two batteries here. They're wired in parallel. And I kept them as close as possible. So we have a very short run between the two batteries. And these are deep cycle RV batteries. And then just on the inside of here, and I'll, I'll show you how we've got it wired, but inside of here we run from our battery into an inverter that's just on the other side of the wall. So again, it's a very short run between the inverter and the battery. Um, you want the shortest run possible. But again, we'll talk about our energy system at a later point. But while we're on it, on top of our roof, we have three 100 watt solar panels. We have Renogy, we love Renogy. Um, it, we can add a fourth with the controller that we have. We actually started with two and we realized we needed a little bit more power as we've been on the road. So we added a third, super simple process. Um, but those run through the controller in our camper and then that runs the juice into our two batteries and our battery bank. So we don't ever really worry about running out of power. Even on a cloudy day, for the most part, we're gonna be juicing up these batteries. We also modified our tie downs. You'll notice our tie downs are to the flatbed itself. This is really a unique feature of having the camper on the flatbed is that it's secured here at this point and another point up front. Instead of having frame mounted tie downs that would come out off of this, we've actually got the tie downs going to the flatbed. We do have two points that we have modified. So we've got the tie down to this part of the frame and then up front, we've modified, so we've got a hook here. And so that way we're pulling the camper inward and we're also pulling it forward. So it has the same, so it has the same security of normal tie downs. Taking a look at the camper itself from the outside, we have all the things that a normal RV would have. Uh, your arrangement may be different from ours, but with ours, it's a Lance 845. We have our water input. This is our hot water heater. Here's our connection for shore power, AC power. This is the furnace output. Here's our outdoor shower. And then our battery compartment for our camper battery. On this side of our camper, we have our LPG, our propane tanks. We have two of them, which is great. Having that extra tank gives us peace of mind as we're boondocking. We also have our refrigerator vent, another one of our LED lights, and we have an awning that pops out, which is really great. We also have a level on this side, which is important. It helps us stay level. Uh, we've heard horror stories and met people who have lost their refrigerators because they camped for too long when they weren't level. So we always level out, even if we end up with something that looks like this. The back of our camper is the entryway to our home. It is also where we exit to come out into the backyard. So it centers a lot about recreation and toys. We went with a bike rack mounted to our ladder. We used to carry our bikes in the front. Now that we have our winch installed up front, we move our bikes to the back. It's easy to get them on and off. Really convenient to have them back here. If we need to go up to the roof, we can go through the inside of the camper and pop up on, on the cab over. 
It's hard to see inside this compartment, but this is where we keep all of our toys. So we've got snorkeling gear, we keep our paddles for our kayak, we've got bike equipment, everything that we use pretty much that revolves around toys, our pump for our kayak. So everything that we use um, basically to play goes into this little storage area. On this side, this is where our valves are for releasing our black and our gray tanks. We also have a little awning that comes out, which is great for days when it's raining. We can pull it out and at least keep our shoes and things dry up underneath. For the most part, when it's raining straight down, sometimes in Florida we've learned rain comes in sideways. And then my favorite little storage area for what I call the poop pipe or the poop tube slides in into our bumper. So it stays out of the way. The mess stays out of the way. We only have to touch it when we need it. We swapped out all of our light bulbs, so we have all LED lights, both internal and external. It's pretty inexpensive and simple to do, and it cuts down on energy consumption quite a bit. So all of our lights externally are LED lights. And the last feature of our truck is our winch. This is an investment that I hope I never use, so we went ahead and got it set up. Um, to be able to have it, to use it if we need it, to help others if we need it, but I personally hope that it's like an insurance policy that I never touch. Thanks for taking the time to watch this tour. Hopefully we inspired you with some designs of your own. Hopefully we gave you some information for things that you can do and how to do them, and uh, let us know what you think. Leave us a positive comment. Leave us something that can help other people with their design. We, uh, we do want to make sure that we're providing the best information we can to help you with your build out. Uh, whether you have a flatbed truck camper, a normal truck camper, or an RV, hopefully you got some ideas for how you can make your life a little bit more comfortable, a little safer, a little more pleasant, enjoyable on the road. If you haven't already done so, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and see how we live full time in our truck camper as we're attempting to drive from Alaska to Argentina. We'll show you what daily life is like as we're having all kinds of adventures in new places, but also as it relates specifically to our truck and our camper, which is our home on the road.